It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Friday, April 7th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that really like was taking some notes watching the Dallas Stars and what they could do. I mean, I hope the new coach took some notes. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, Dallas had a really good game. Flyers did not. So we'll recap that one. Plus, get into some third round draft pick possibilities and preview the weekend matchups against the Islanders and the Bruins. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with prospect expert Russ Cohen, who is on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow the show on Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. That is where you'll keep up to date on our episodes and Flyers news. You can email the show at lockdownflyers at gmail to send us your mailbag questions and subscribe or follow on YouTube or anywhere you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Russ, uh, Carter Hart checked back into this one, which was good. Just hopefully he can end this season uh, on a positive note uh, besides this game in particular. I think he was a little rusty at the beginning of this one, but I don't really put the blame entirely on him. I think there were some really big turnovers that led to uh, Dallas goals, as well as just like blown coverage, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I'll blame him for the miscommunication with him and Provorov behind the net. Mm-hmm. Hard, hard let go of that puck too quick. He did. Provorov didn't even know where it was. But beyond that, yeah, I, I didn't hold it on him. And look, this team is just not ready. They were not ready to face the Dallas Stars. They weren't. Uh, they got tired. They had nothing in the fourth, in the third period. I almost said the fourth period. They had nothing. I mean, it was really just. You know, it, it was like watching a scrimmage, honestly. I mean, they never had a chance in this game. Jason Robertson probably took the life out of them with the first period goal. But again, yeah. you know, these are things I understand that next year they're hoping for better things. And I understand that they're going to take whatever they can out of this, you know, last bit of the season. But I still have to wor- worry and wonder how this defense is going to match up against NHL teams because. They're just not there, and most of these guys are coming back. Yeah, I mean, obviously we'll see what happens, but I I think that was a a huge part of it in this game is that, you know, just defensively the Flyers didn't have answers for what Dallas could do in this game, and and they Dallas was just a step ahead the entire game and just really had a, a lot more set plays, and you could see the Flyers were kind of scrambling there and you know on one uh, side I was very glad to see that Ronnie Adder got a a real defensive pairing for this game with Nick Sealer that was good Mm -hmm. and actually Sealer played pretty well in this game I would say he was like you know him and Risto a little bit but yeah no but that's it I mean that was about it the thing that I really don't understand Well, I I do as part of this, like the scratching of Tony D'Angelo, I think, you know, to have them go uh, 12 forward, 6 D, an unusual move for for Tortorella (laughs) as of late. Yeah. Uh, What what really got me is on the power play, if you're going to let Cam York go through the end of the season being the passing guy on the point of the power play and have Adder being the shot guy, boy, you've got a lot of things to fix next year. Shouldn't you be trying to fix that now and telling Cam York to shoot from the point? Because he's not shooting, and it's bad. I mean, you you can't use him. You can't use this guy at the point of the power play if he's not going to shoot. You just can't. There's a million guys that could pass. 
I think that's a fair point. And I don't know if it's a confidence thing with Cam York right now, because, you know, he doesn't have a lot of goal points on the board this season, only two goals. No, I get uh, it. If you memory just serves. Try to do it, right? Otherwise. Oh, I, I don't disagree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm saying, like, that's maybe why he isn't mm-hmm. shooting, even though he's in the right position. I'm not saying that's a coaching thing, right? Right. Um, but it's a coaching I, I think, thing to get him in the right position to shoot. Yeah. Otherwise, take them off. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, definitely a lot of work to do on that in the off season. Uh, you know, the one upside, I would say uh, Kevin Hayes ending that 23 game goal drought uh, with the only goal for the Flyers in this game. Um, I, I think that energized him a little bit for like another five, 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I think that was about it. I also um, a lot of guys mailed this in, though they did, yeah. especially in the it's, third period. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't care what the, what the coach says; it, it was pretty obvious. Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, chances in the third period, and you know they were even in, in scoring chances in the third period, but. Dallas was just kind of sitting back and riding it out. And they still got four high danger chances in that third period where the Flyers had none. And and that just says it all right there. You got to do something else here. You can't, you should be done fiddling at this point. You should at least be able to show the fans something like, Hey, okay, we get that the team's not very good and some things aren't going to work right, but there's just not a lot working right. And that's a problem. Yeah, it it is a problem. Um, And I'm still struggling with the Tanner Lezinski situation. Um, He he did at least get into this game again. And I guess they're just going to ride it out with him playing because I think they really don't have any other choice uh, right now. But you can tell that Torch doesn't like him. He's not getting the right kind of minutes in order to show it what he can do. He doesn't have the right line mates either. Uh, in terms of his style of play, I, I think he would do much better, honestly, in that Kevin Hayes slot in the third line. But I, I know they can't move Kevin Hayes. So I understand why it is the way it is, but it's just so frustrating <laughs> to, to yeah, see Yeah, it's definitely frustrating. It's, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, again, I get kind of speechless with these guys sometimes because it's like you're just – I, I don't know what's going on, and I guess one day we'll talk about the uh, the search for the uh, hockey ops person and the optics of what's going on with that. And it, it's hard to have any faith in this organization right now. It's very hard, and I and fans are constantly texting me and messaging me, and you know they're they're questioning things, and I don't blame them. Yeah, it's it's not great, and it, it is hard to know what even next season is going to look like, given all of the question marks. But it, it, you know, we can only go by what we're seeing on the ice right now. And you know, I would say that in most games, you know, we've seen that the effort is there. It may be too little, too late, but we've seen sparks of it. And this is just one of those games where it didn't happen at all. Right. Didn't happen, so okay, you know, move on. But as still as far as you know, improvement in the organization, there's a lot of it that has to come. And now I'm kind of wondering about a lot of different things. I, I, you know, I hate to say it, but uh, this season, at the end of the season here, I'm probably wondering more about what's going to go on than I was at the beginning because at the beginning I was figuring. All right, these injured guys really aren't coming back. I think that was the main thing that was unsettled. But I felt like uh, you would see a cohesion or something with this team, a gelling. We only saw that a couple times this year. That's it. Yeah, yeah, it's really unfortunate. But uh, to the future, we must look. And we are going to do that by checking out some third round pick possibilities available in this year's draft coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. 
Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find the candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. One of the things that I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy. They partner with you every step of the way in the hiring process. You can find great talent through their time-saving tools like Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. With Indeed Instant Match, over 90% of employers get quality candidates as soon as they sponsor their job posts. Candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are then three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only find it in search. And now with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that meet your specific hiring criteria. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to get started. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Russ, we were talking on yesterday's show about uh, spinning the wheel of the draft lottery to see where the Flyers might end up in this year's draft to focus on that first round pick. But this is a very deep draft and the Flyers have other picks, don't have a second rounder, which is the bane of my existence in (laughs) Flyers land. Uh, Although we'll see if they trade for one uh, prior to the draft. Um, but in the meantime, you know, they're, they're sitting with a potential couple of third round draft picks. And so we thought we'd just take a quick look at some of the possibilities there to uh, start to get excited about the upcoming draft. And uh, you wanted to talk about some three really interesting possibilities. Uh, the first one is uh, Gustav's Ozelins, Oz- Gustav's Ozelins. He is a Latvian defenseman who played in World Juniors this year. He's 19, uh, and he's already playing in North America in the NAHL. Uh, 23 points in 32 games uh, up in Minnesota. He's a Bemidji State commit. Uh, a little bit of a smaller guy at 5'10". Uh, uh, why did you want to talk about him specifically? Well, I think... Playing in the North American Hockey League, he's sort of like forgotten, but um, he had a good World Juniors, and that's where I sort of first noticed him. And what happens sometimes with European players is they can't find a place to play. Mm -hmm. And so that's where a league like the North American Hockey League can be a godsend. So the guy can keep playing because this guy is talent. Like he's... He's a really good offensive defenseman. He's good on the power play. Uh, I think he's a good skater. With the um, with the World Juniors, in two of them, he's had eight, uh, six points in ten games. So as a defenseman, that's really solid. Uh, that's also playing on North American ice. He's playing on North American ice now. His last World Juniors, four points in five games. He was the captain. Like this is the kind of guy who tends to get overlooked. And again, it's just because they're, it's easy to find other players. Now, the reason I've sort of rescued him here, um, and he is sort of out in the Minnesota wilderness to, to make a pun, is just the, for the fact that, yeah, um, how many are going to go out and see him in the North American Hockey League this year? I know I know of him because of the World Juniors, and I've watched some other video of him. But so far, what I've seen, I've really liked. And, you know, he did get his feet wet also in the USHL. So the North American thing, it's there. He's already adjusted. That's a plus. 5'10", all right, look, there's other 5'10 guys in the league. It's not impossible. But I'm also picking in the third round. So why not take a swing at, you know, again, you can never have enough defensemen. I think he's a good guy to take a swing at. Yeah, why do you think he's not currently on as many people's radar right now because of the league he's playing in (laughs) that's why um goalies are generally noticed in the north american hockey league um the flyers got um their goalie who's currently with anaheim whose name is escaping me this moment stolars yeah anthony stolars came out of the north american hockey league so that they're known for more goaltending than anything but 
doesn't mean you can't get other players from there. And so, again, I just think that it came down to a situation where he didn't have a place to play. He's playing. He's doing really well. He proved that his own age group he could do really well in the World Juniors. Uh, it's good enough for me. All right. I like it so far. Uh, our next guy is Aiden Fink. He is, again, a smaller guy. This is the theme with these three rests. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he's a winger. And he's in, in another sort of alternate junior league. He's in the Alberta Junior League right now, uh, but is a Wisconsin commit for next season. So that's a top program. Uh, but currently he has a whopping 97 points in 54 games in that Alberta League. And uh, he is on some people's radar. He's kind of ranked high to mid third round mm -hmm. as of now. And I think that could even improve. but. I'll just say he's going to be in the third. Uh, he gives me <coughs> um, Diego Fergus, Fergus high um, vibes, mm -hmm. but he also is a better passer than Fergus. Like he may not be quite the goal scorer he is. I know he's got forty-one goals, but in, in that league, there you know if you can goal score, it's tend to be tends to be a little easier. But but he can also play make. His skating's very good. He's smart. This guy studies on how to score. Like he's constantly looking at video. He he really puts in the work, and I think that's an important thing here because he knows, hey, I'm not the biggest guy, so I've got to be really, really good at what I do. And he is like he's you know he's putting up big time numbers. He even told me this year that, and this is a thing where I have found that humility could tell me something about the person because he's got mm -hmm. 97 points. He could puff his chest out and say, I'm one of the best guys in this league. But he said, you know. He told me that pucks are going my way. And it's like, all right, you know, I like the way you're you're thinking there. You don't want to uh, put too much emphasis on what you're doing. But his big thing is, and, and this is a good quote, I just want to put the puck in the net as quickly as I can. I don't want to get into my mind that I have the puck on my stick. Some bounces can happen. So just, you know how we always talk about having a decisive shot? He yeah. has a decisive shot. We know some players that sometimes overthink it. And you, and you know, the extra one or two seconds is all it takes to overthink it and miss when you go to the NHL. But he also always has his, his stick down. And he gave one of his um, teammates credit for that. And that's another thing. Again, it sounds very basic. You're taught that very early on in hockey. If you don't have your stick down, you're going to miss out on opportunities. He always has his stick down. So, again, he's got a shooting tarp in his garage. That is something that Fergus did, if you remember. He had that in his basement. So this is, you know, a guy who is shooting a lot and is shooting at a high accuracy. Yeah, the one question I have is, like, because of his size, is he going to be able to keep his stick down like that up against bigger, tougher NHL-level competition? I think he can, but I think it's going to take time. So, like, right now, you know, we're talking about an 18-year-old, so three years of Wisconsin, maybe even all four. Uh, and then another year in the AHL, something to that effect. But I do think he'll be able to because he is smart and he does think the game really well. But he needs mm -hmm. to you know, get stronger. And that's where being at Wisconsin and, uh, you know, at a big time school will help him. Yeah, that's what I love about when the smaller guys go play college hockey as opposed to junior hockey, because they do play against those bigger guys, right, who are 21, 22 years old. and like four, uh, 25 sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot, I think, more physical competition yeah. than you would but see. But I will say this, the AJHL has older players than you think, too. So mm -hmm. that's another league that has some overagers. So he is already doing that to some degree. All right. Uh, our third guy, Emil Yarventi, who is a 5'10 mm -hmm. winger from Finland, uh, he is currently ranked uh, in the late second round, early third round, uh, so a little higher than Ozilin's. Uh, but uh, I was a little confused about his background because it seemed like he came over the USHL for a brief stint but went back to Finland. Uh, he played for their U18 national team. And so I wonder like, what the question mark here is with him, like what's going on with his development path. I think... Early on, and I caught up with him, you know, months ago, and that was at the uh, Five Nations tournament. Mm -hmm. And 
I, I loved his shot. I said, man, this guy has got a shot. It's a pro shot. And it's more than just like what Tuamala had as far as he's got more tools than that. Like Tuamala had that great shot. We all know that. But he's got more tools than that. And he was a guy that I think people were looking at and saying, hmm, but what else could he do besides the shot? Because if that shot doesn't translate, how is he going to help my hockey team? And so, like, one of the things he told me, and it did happen in that tournament, was, you know, he has to play better all over the ice, be harder in different situations. And I watched him get better. I even watched him get demoted in one of the games and then do better the next game. So he got pushed from the um, first line to the second line. And, right. you know, and he handled it like a pro. He's like, listen, it doesn't matter where I'm going to play. All these guys are good. Um, his big thing was, at, you know, at five on five, he was really, really a dangerous guy to have the puck on his stick. Obviously, he's going to be good on the power play with the shot, but he won't even call himself a goal scorer. And I think he is a goal scorer, but he uses his skating to get space to score. I think that's the big thing. His skating is really good. It'll get better. And he's certainly going to want to go back and, and play in Liga because that's like, you know, his dream. And you could let him play there. For a couple years, but again, there's something about this guy, and sometimes I can't tell you all that it is. Sometimes after speaking to him and watching him and watching, see the, the advantage you get when you can see a tournament like this live is you can see a progression in a player sometimes, positively and negatively, because that player has to keep coming back every day and keep playing right in this tournament, and and that made a difference being able to see that, and so I think you know. Next year, he'll play full-time in Liga. He got some time this year, but he wasn't able to quite do it. Uh, in Mestis, he was playing better. In the playoffs, he's got five points in nine games. All mm -hmm. really good signs, he's 18 years old. Like, just to put this in different perspective, like, if you go look at Tuomala's numbers, he's not even had this kind of project, you know, right. progression yet. He's finally having it this year, but he's older, right? Right. And I was going to – that was a very good – point because I was going to ask how he compares to Tuomala. Yeah, well, I think Tuomala could be better, but he just for whatever reason hasn't been able to stick with a team and I think that's a big thing and Yarventi, you know, seems to be just in a better place and I don't know why. Maybe they think higher of him, whatever. Like Tuomala's got 26 goals in 29 games this year in Mestis. That's good. That's really good, but it's still a lower league. He hasn't even played in Liga in, in, a, in a year. Well, he did this year. He played 13 games, and he had no no points. So right, so right now, Yarvente has actually done better at a younger age. He's two years younger. So yep. I think there's that. I think he's a better skater, and I do think his overall game is better. I think that's the – I'm not going to say his shot's better because tuomala has got a really good shot, but so does this kid. All right. Well, these are three good prospects to take a look at. Uh, we will be getting uh, deeper into draft mode, obviously, uh, later next week when the season is officially over. And speaking of that, we have our last weekend preview of games to talk about coming up next. The NBA playoffs are almost here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000, that's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money lines, point scores, and threes drained. Like I said, even if you're not going to bet on Joel Embiid for MVP, just bet on him in games, man. He's one of the best guys to watch. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Russ, it's our last weekend preview of the season. Uh, we did it. We made it. Um, we did it. This is actually a really interesting couple of games to have back-to-back -back at the tail end of the season. On Saturday, the Flyers face the New York Islanders uh, up on Long Island, who are in a fight for their lives in uh, the playoff race. Um, they pretty much need to, to win out to guarantee 
their playoff spot and have things in their control. Uh, they did play Tampa last night. And as of recording, we don't know who won. But the last three games of their season are against all eliminated teams. So they have the Flyers, the Caps, and the Habs, which you know could be a really good sign for them. But the problem is then they would immediately face the Bruins, our other opponent for the weekend in uh, the playoffs, should they finish in the wild card two spot uh, with Florida kind of surging. I don't know. And the pens doing, I don't know what uh, the Isles are kind of the middleman, I think in this battle. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting with the Islanders because they will have come off a, a game with Tampa, which we don't know the results, and right. they're, they're getting a break because they're going to face uh, Brian Elliott, um, and so that's a uh, a nice thing to not have to face uh, Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky, yeah, going against the Rangers, so that's a a big thing. And the Islanders need these games. I don't think Matt Barzell will be in it. Basically, um, reading the tea leaves from the reporters online, it's it seems like the longest of long shots. Uh, so I don't think he'll be in this game. I think this is a game where the Flyers, if they want to prove something this season, take it to the Islanders. They've had enough history where usually their games are pretty close anyhow, no matter who's good. Who yep. The Islanders have always given the Flyers trouble and, and and vice versa. You're going into their building. You know, this is one where Tortorella should not be coaching anywhere but behind the bench. Hopefully that's done for the year. And, he, you know, he needs to fire his team up for this one. Because, you know, based on the last couple of games, obviously the team needs a, you know, a kick in the butt every third period because the first couple haven't been good. This is one where the first period has to be good. The Islanders will jump on you otherwise, and they'll try and protect the lead, especially if Sorokin's in there. So you've got to try and get on the board first. You've got to go in there with your hair on fire. We'll see. We'll see if they do that. Yeah, part of me would really like to see the Flyers win this game if it means that the Islanders do not make the playoffs. Right. I mean, that's another factor. You could be a spoiler. Yeah, I think that's a fun part of these late season games when your team is eliminated, especially like a team with, I think, you know, like you said, these teams have just really battled it out over the last couple of years. I think it's kind of actually gone off of that playoff series that the Isles won uh, in seven games, and it just kind of felt like a grind against this team. Now that's partially the Isles' style of, of play, but also I just I feel like the rivalry with the Islanders is uh, much more than it was maybe like five, seven years ago, as the Islanders yeah. have been a better team. Yeah, I think so. And listen, if you want to really make a statement to next year, then go in there and, and give them hell and win this game. That yep. would go a long way into proving, you know, something for John Tortorella, the coaching staff, whatever players come back. That's a big deal because if you go in here and the Islanders just blow you out, you know, good luck. Good luck even because all Boston's going to do is toy with you. That's all. Right. They're, they're going to have certain players in there. Probably Marshawn will be in there just because he enjoys toying with the Flyers anyhow. And that's what that game's going to be. This is going to be the one where you'll play in a playoff level game. So see what, show us what you got. Yeah, uh, I think the the Bruins will definitely rest at least one guy on Sunday because they're fighting for nothing other than to have a good time. Uh, And frankly, it'll be fun to watch a really good team play hockey the way that they do. um, As far as because it'll be like, hey, I can get a couple more goals in this game. Exactly. Yeah, interestingly, uh, if in terms of a first round matchup for the Bruins. they're two one and one against the Panthers, and they're three and zero against the Pens and Isles. So, uh, I think you know. I'm not sure if I was a Bruins fan, which team I would like them to face. I would say the Pens and Isles, but mostly because the Panthers are surging and in a, a really good upswing right now, and could potentially be a bigger spoiler. Yeah, you don't um, want to get in a shootout with them because Bob can be really good at times. So yeah. I agree with you that you'd want it to be one of the other two teams. I know everybody says you don't want to face the Islanders in the playoffs, but they're saying that because of Sorokin, but the Islanders are still going to have to score in the playoffs. And they've been scoring more at the end of the year, but I still wonder how much they'll score in the playoffs. Yeah, same. So that is your back-to-back 
for the weekend for the Flyers. Uh, next week is it. They face Columbus and Chicago, which is interesting for the lottery. That's, that's a lottery weekend there, you know, whatever, a couple games. Yeah, for, for all three teams, really. So um, they, they will have significant implications. We will talk about those games next week. Uh, on Monday, we'll wrap up the Frozen Four. We'll recap these weekend matchups. Plus, we'll have our nemesis of the week. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. So send in your questions via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at LockdownFlyers at Gmail or you can comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen today. Now make your next listen Game to Game NHL. It's every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. It's on your Locked On NHL feed anywhere you get your podcasts. Have a great weekend, everyone.